I remember sitting down in a conference room and watching this purple and blue FPS game on console and scratching my head and saying, was this really going to be it? Was this going to be the thing that defined Xbox? And obviously, 10 years later, it, it proves that that was the kind of the seminal moment for us, the beginning of Halo as an Xbox game. Not only did Halo 1 bring the FPS to the console, it also brought story. Cortana. I've spent the last 12 hours cooped up. The combination really established sort of a new genre, if you will, of FPS console story expectation. Halo did a lot of really conventional storytelling through cinematics and cool voice acting and great music, obviously. But I think some of the storytelling that happens in Halo that's most inspiring to me is the storytelling that happens through the environment and the sandbox. While you were hit with all this great fiction that you could really kind of delve into and try to understand more about, at the same time, you could just pick it up and play. All of that kind of came together to make a game that had not necessarily was completely different than what previous shooters had done, but got all of its individual formulas so excellently perfect. You had this incredible first-person shooter experience that I don't think anyone had ever even come close to before it. Halo was the beginning of me playing console games with my friends, and that's still how I always think about it. I think people have been asking for a remake of Halo 1 since Halo 2 was announced. I like to go all the way back to the day that Xbox Live came out, and the demand for Halo 1 and the ability to place a co-op over Xbox Live kind of started, and it built up over the years and over the years. It was the perfect timing since the 10-year anniversary was coming up. It occurred to us that there's this entire generation of people who never played the original game. If you're an 18-year-old gamer today, you were eight when Halo came out. We did due diligence on a number of partners. The number one requirement was that it didn't impact gameplay at all. You have a classic. You have something that's just magical, right? If you go and tinker with it, you're going to lose that magic. What we really needed was someone who could work with our existing physics and gameplay engine. Saber popped up really quickly. and They're like, yeah, we can do this. We can make the game look like a current generation game, and we can do it by using the original Halo 1 engine. The gameplay in Halo 1 is what's called deterministic. In other words, if you feed the engine the same input, the game will behave in the same way. And if you can apply this principle across a network, you can have two game worlds completely in sync. So rather than simulate Halo's original gameplay or Halo's original physics, we're able to actually use them completely. So the car is nice and shiny, but the engine is fairly old, but so we have to make sure that it all kind of fits together. And then we have to speed up the engine to make sure it works in today's world. We've done some deliberate things. The library is easier to navigate now. We use lighting and textures to make it a little bit simpler. The pillars are covered in holograms on one side, or they're more decorated on the other side. From what we've noticed, it actually seems to help people that aren't familiar with the library figure out where they're going. Truth and Reconciliation is one of the best examples I can give. If you come to that first interaction and then you make your way towards a cliff, you can look up and see this unbelievable skybox. And so having all these updated graphics has really made the game, to me, just more immersive. I still remember the first time I saw someone switch to graphics. I didn't know that was actually going to be a feature until I saw someone do it. In a lot of ways, it was a very, very fine balancing act. Because again, we're running all the original Halo 1 animations, so it's the original Halo 1 skeletons for those characters needed to be rebound into the updated meshes that we had brought over from Halo Reach and from Halo 3. For example, the Elite actually has an elongated neck, so they're a little bit more squat and compact. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. Welcome back, sir. We'll have you battle ready stack. Master Chief's iconic. And he has to look like a hero and he has to look just right. Chief's armor was, was that was a tough process. We went back and forth on that for a long time. Well, originally, we were using you know, Mark V armor that's built in the multiplayer component of Reach. We just kept coming back and it just didn't look like Master Chief. The first stuff we put out around E3, uh, I think the forum reaction was instantly Chief looks wrong, his visor's too big, the color's all wrong. Some people thought we were doing it intentionally as a retro. If you saw the original uh, Chief from like 1999 era, he had a really tall, very matte, reflective helmet. It actually looked similar to that. The thing about this group working on this project is that we are very, very passionate about getting this right. We iterated on that probably six, seven months before we finally got a final Chief's armor that I think looks awesome. One of the number one asks that we had for a Halo remake was we want co-op over live. The original Halo 1 campaign experience had already been designed for cooperative play. You notice when you are getting out of the initial cryotube, there's actually two cryotubes for the for cinematic. It definitely creates another challenge for us when you're playing with somebody else, but we obviously wanted to support that. The code base was built uh, 10, if not 15 years ago, so we had to figure out how this code base is structured, how it was designed. We had a lot of people work really long hours to make it happen and to really 
really code it ultimately from scratch. It's pretty seamless, so you'll go into the campaign lobby, and there you'll see your friends who are online playing the game. You fire off an invite to a friend, and they'll be able to join you. Allowing you to play what was originally a split-screen cooperative campaign experience, now across lines. Skull on. Classically, skulls in Halo tend to affect behavior, which means the AI needs to support those behavioral changes. How do we create something that alters gameplay? Well, one of our fundamental tenets is keeping gameplay the same. Skulls are one of the tools we're giving the player that if they do want to change their gameplay experience a little bit, they can do it. The benefit to this is that most of these skulls are brand new. You've never seen them before, you've never played them. Like Malfunction, where random HUD elements disappear whenever you respawn. Boom is a skull that increases the radius of explosions, making explosions and more dangerous both for the Covenant and for the player. That in combination with something like Grunt Funeral means that you become very afraid of grunts. We must continue this way, please. There are a few features that got into the game that turned out better than we expected, and 3D is probably the number one. It was, it was unexpected, it was a bonus, and I don't see 3D very well, but it really worked for me. So it's, for some reason it just pops in Halo in a way that it doesn't in other games or even movies. Yeah, I'd say the uh, feature that surprised me the most was connect. So we've got a number of voice commands throughout the course of the game. Things like grenade, reload. At a point during the game when you're playing, you can say analyze and this mode comes up where you can almost capture items. So you move your cursor over, say an elite or a grunt, and in the library, you can go in there and see the things you've captured, move the model around in 3D, and it gives you a bit of a breakdown and explanation of what those characters are. For me, when I think about Halo, I think about looking around and just the scope and the scale of everything. This is the game that started it all, and people can really dive in and play and remember what it was like to play it 10 years ago, and if you didn't play it 10 years ago, you can see what it was like 10 years ago. It's the quintessential walk down memory lane with a much better visuals. Ultimately, the thing you learn is it doesn't just look modern, it feels completely modern. A completely remastered campaign, great additional features like co-op over live, skulls, Terminals, 3D, Connect, and multiplayer. Once you see it for yourself, it, it, I don't know, really, it's a pretty awesome experience. There's a lot of stuff in there for $40. We're actually really excited about the fact that there's so much there and it's a real smorgasbord of stuff for people who enjoy Halo. One of the best values that you'll find this holiday season, by far.